Welcome back. So I've already talked about the controller, but I want to use this as a good example on what we actually get from the NT framework. So think of this. The REST API right here gets some kind of HTTP request from Postman, right? And the REST API has the responsibility of figuring out, taking this envelope, this information set, and converting it into something we can use in our program. So first of all, it figures out that this is a post request, so we need to hit this method or this action right here. It figures out that we're getting some JSON in this case, and we need to use that JSON and convert it from JSON into c -sharp objects. It does that for you as well. And in the end, it actually gives you a resp response back if things went uh, bad or they went okay down here. So that's the responsibility for the REST API in our case. But for the NT framework, we have another responsibility. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to jump into ntframeworktutorial.net, there's a link in the description, and I pick EF Core right here, I click the introduction, and I scroll down a bit, and here there's this drawing right here kind of explaining the value of the NT framework for us. Now we have two approaches we can use. We are going to use the second one, but the first approach is that we make an entire SQL database from scratch. We build it ourselves, we map everything in there, we put keys in there, we make an entire SQL database. This is if you have an existing database, then the NT framework can take that database and create all the NT classes that you need, all the, the entire context that you need. It can build it for you from an SQL database, right? We're going to use the other approach. We're going to say we're going to create class objects. We already have those. We have customers. We have order right now. Now it takes that customer and order and it creates a customer table and an orders table. And since we have relations, it'll also add the foreign keys that we need. Um, primary keys, whatever we need, it'll create that for us inside the SQL database. And that's the role for the NT framework, but it does more. It actually also helps us when we make a request. We can use a link to actually say we want to build a request to list or get all customers, for instance. It'll go to the database, send an SQL query saying select all customers, uh, select all from customers. It'll actually return some kind of SQL response and it'll wrap that inside a C sharp object for us. In this case, probably a list of customers. So the role for the NT framework is just like with the REST API, it's just downwards towards the data instead. So it's to kind of work with data, but to map it inside a C sharp world. So there's a bit more information about what you can do here. You can go and read up on it. Um, some of the ways you can, you can batch in certain stuff like that. We'll look at some of this, we won't look at it all. So here are the different data sources that we kind of provide right now in the .NET Core framework, what you can pick from. This is the one we're going to use, one of them, the SQL Server. We're going to skip MySQL and Postgres. They are kind of cool, so we can go and check those out later, but it won't be a big different difference in our code, actually. It'll be the exact same code for the NT framework, but you can pick these if you want to. I'm going to show the SQL Lite just to show you how easy it is to switch between the SQL Lite and the SQL Server, and then we're going to try and use in-memory database in the beginning, but it does have a kind of a it can't lock the data properly, so I can't use that for testing and working with you guys. So I'll get rid of it pretty quickly, but this will be the first thing we'll try and implement in our solution. So that's it for this lesson. Now you know where we're kind of going. We're going to start using this NT framework and you can go and just start checking out all the cool things it can do in this page. It's awesome tutorial for actually working with the NT framework. That's it for this lesson. Next time we'll start implementing.